Real Madrid is now chasing its 15th Champions League trophy and this is absolutely brilliant given the fact that many big clubs haven't even managed to win it once. Man City and PSG might not like this. But explaining this Madrid Champions League DNA is not rocket science. There appears to be no grand philosophy or a single playing style like there is at Barcelona to explain this madness. In fact, a series of underlying factors define Madrid's glory in Europe's biggest competitions. Here are the secrets behind Real Madrid's Champions League winning machine. Number 1. The first five editions set the tone. Real Madrid is the king of Europe, standing alone as the club to win Europe's premier tournament on the most occasions, with their first coming back in the inaugural European Cup in 1956. They went on to win the first five editions of the tournament and the culture of winning European trophies has been instilled into the club ever since. Between those 10 years from 56 to 66, Madrid won the trophy six times, reaching the final eight times. That foundation stone was laid down by the club legends and it appears that it has now become a moral responsibility for current players to carry on that legacy by winning Europe's biggest feat. Well, history repeats itself. Number 2. The World's Biggest Talent Hoarders It's no hidden fact that Bernabeu is a hub for the world's most precious and talented footballers. Madrid isn't just a club, it's a system. Over the past couple of decades, it is observed that the club has the propensity to sign either top quality youngsters or else established names in the primes of their careers. And most importantly, Real's youth policy is different from that of other clubs. In most cases, Real's top Castilla talent is generally loaned out or sold with the buyback clause to a club. If a player performs, he's given a chance at Real. Many players, including Carvajal, Casemiro, Lucas, Morata and Llorente, were all brought back after impressing in their loan stints. On the other hand, players like Nacho and Lucas remained at the club, fought for their chances and became successful members of the squad. Similarly, players like Morata and Llorente prefer to leave despite performing decently. On top of that, it's rare that they sign players over 30. Apart from Ruud van Nistelrooy, Emerson, Carvalho and Cannavaro, the club has hardly invested in players at the twilight of their careers. These factors have ultimately helped the club shine at the highest European stage. But it would be unfair not to talk about the player's mentality, as once a wise man said that success starts from a positive mindset. Number 3. Champions Mentality the turning point in Madrid's history came when Carlo Ancelotti led the team to La Decima, their 10th Champions League title. It was the start of a glorious cycle that, nine years later, is still going strong. Only Atletico Madrid has been able to beat Los Blancos in a final during that period. They did it in the 2014 Supercopa de España and then again in the 2018 European Super Cup. You'll be amazed to know that Madrid has a stunning record when it comes to big finals, because Real Madrid doesn't play finals, they win them. Since 2014, they've secured 16 trophies from 18 finals, most of anyone. The last time they lost a Champions League final was against Liverpool back in May 1981. Indeed, records speak volumes about this strong Galacticos mentality, and it appears that this will continue in the coming years as well. But you could argue that Papa Perez should be given the most appreciation for their unparalleled achievements. Number 4. Ruthless Ownership – Florentino Perez Well, the European Super League controversy did bring Perez into the spotlight and many of you have called him evil. But deep down you know that he has been a revelation for the club. The journey for Perez wasn't smooth sailing. He first ran for the presidency of Real Madrid in 1995 and lost it. In his second attempt he was successful and became president in 2000. Following his arrival, he introduced the famous Galactico policy of signing high-profile superstars and improving the team drastically. He signed Luis Figo in 2000 and signings such as Michael Owen, Beckham, Robinho and Zinedine Zidane ensured that Los Blancos won two La Ligas as well as their ninth Champions League. This approach adopted by Perez not only added quality to the pitch but also helped solve financial issues off the pitch. He successfully turned Real Madrid into a global brand and the shirt sales of such superstar signings helped the club clear the debt when the 71-year-old took over. To put it simply, Perez created a capitalist model where money was generated from massive public contracts and brand deals that would help the club earn profits. Ultimately, that money was invested into hiring top-notch players who would win him big trophies. But he wasn't the only one acting as a watchdog on the players. Number 5. Demanding Fans Fans at the Bernabeu aren't like normal fans. They are so passionate about the game that they hate losing. 
they are so much into the game that a slight mistake by a player would compel them to boo him. Even all-time legends like Di Stefano and Ronaldo have been criticised by the crowd. Ahead of Christmas in 1962, Di Stefano appeared in an advertisement in which his bottom half was that of a woman. If I were my wife, I'd wear Berkshire, the caption read. It didn't go down well with the Real Madrid fans who booed at him in the next home match. Similarly, there is an endless list of players including Bale, Ronaldo, Isco and Raul who have faced the wrath of the fans. Well, sometimes such pressure can help players win high-intensity games and Madrid's 14 Champions League titles bear testimony to this theory. It would be interesting to see if the Galacticos will be able to clinch the title again this year. Time will tell. Let me know in the comments what you think about the reasons behind Real Madrid's Champions League glory.